Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is the Dr. Tom the Frog Show with Dr. Tom the Frog, and we're talking about role-playing games! I am super excited today to bring on Marshall Miller. He's the author of Nano World and a game that's currently in Kickstarter called us uh, from Bull Pit, uh, the Bully Pulpit, oh, Bullfrog Pulpit, uh, yeah, Bullfrog Pulpit Games. It's called War and Peace. How are you doing, Marshall? I'm doing all right. How are you, Dr. Tom? Oh, I'm super. Thanks for asking. Now, now tell me about this game, War and Peace. I understand this game is all about bunnies for some reason. What's going on? The game is called The Warren. It's a tabletop role-playing game about rabbits. Um, as you might imagine, it uh, started out with me reading Watership Down, um, but whereas most people probably read it as a teenager, um, I read it when I was 30, and importantly, I read it after I had read Vincent Baker's Apocalypse World. So, of course, throughout the whole thing, um, all I saw was just the different game mechanics, so uh, everything just sort of fell together after that. Well, why bunnies? Because, you know, they're not as awesome as frogs, because they can't swim. <laughs> some can, some can. Um, you know, rabbits are a lot like people. Um, they have a lot of the same problems people do, uh, deciding where to live, and um, how to divide resources and territory and uh, who gets to mate with who and who's in charge. Um, so uh, rabbits live pretty much all over the world. Um, and everywhere that they live, um, if there are carnivores that live in the same area that are bigger than a bread box, then they eat rabbits. So uh, if that doesn't make for some good drama, I don't know what does. I understand that for, for a living, you do science for a living, because really, you can't make a living at game design, right? <laughs> so, so how does being a scientist help with your game design? Did you use an Erlenmeyer flask to cook up the Warren? <laughs> uh, science and game design are a lot alike. They're both uh, very project-based endeavors. Um, so in, in science, you know, you do a lot of research, you find questions that haven't been answered, uh, you try and put together an experiment, and, um, and then you test it out, and if, if it works out, then you write it up and you publish it. And games are very much the same way. Uh, you look around, you see what, uh, what isn't being uh, covered by other games, or what, uh, what problems in gaming you might be able to solve a different way and you uh, try and put something together, and then you test it out, and if it's fun, then you go ahead and try and publish it. Aiming as a parent can be tough. I mean, try playing a penny for my thoughts with a hundred tadpoles around. <laughs> You've run out of money! <laughs> so how do you handle gaming as a parent? You know, the first couple of years are really hard. Uh, you don't get to sleep a lot, and... Uh, they aren't really ready for that sort of organized play. So I'm just getting to the point now where my kids are um, just starting to understand what games are about. And uh, it's a really sort of fun and exciting age. But um, a sort of surprising thing happened uh, recently. Um, I was teaching my son how to play Sorry. And, uh, you know, we... we kind of struggled with it for a little while, and then uh, he turns to me and said, okay, now, now we're going to play by my rules. And that's when it sort of struck me that, um, you know, we weren't necessarily playing uh, the game as it was designed. You know, we were playing the game that I was teaching. Um, and so from that point, we had to sort of negotiate uh, how we were going to play this game. That was a real uh, eye-opening moment. Oh, how old is your son? Four. Four months? Oh, that's very accomplished for a human. Wow. Indeed. Um, no, he's four years. I see. A four-years-old human game designer. Watch out. 
it's fun. You know, his uh, his rules were probably about as incomprehensible and, and confusing to me as mine were to him. So uh, we're, we're negotiating something that is fun for both of us. You know, in Canada, that game would be called Suri. Uh, because they can't say sorry. It's a Canadian thing. Have you ever been to Canada or Canadia? Oh, never been to Canada. Oh, well, it's a lot like America, but cold and more polite. Well, that sounds nice. I'm a doctor. I like to travel. All right, and enough uh, hopping around here. <laughs> I need to ask you a serious question. Are you ready for a serious question, Marshall? Since you're a scientist, I know you can give me the right answer. Which is more realistic? The movie Back to the Future or the movie Weird Science? That's a tough one. Um, gosh, I think I'd have to go with Weird Science. The uh, Some of the breakthroughs recently in uh, 3D printing cells and tissue, I'd I think we might be getting closer to printing humans than uh, than time travel, but uh, but we'll see. All right, I I'm just curious. Do you think the lingerie will be a requirement? Uh, there's a good possibility. Woohoo! Score! That sounds great. Well. Wow. Marshall Miller, uh, creator of The Warren, thank you for coming on the Dr. Tom the Frog Show. It was a pleasure having you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Tom. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.